Good morning and welcome to the Professional Pastors. This is your show host, Ms. Diane Winbush, and we're thankful that you tuned in with us on um, today. Uh, don't forget about our upcoming event that will be held at the Hollywood Community Center located at 1560 North Hollywood uh, Street in the city and state. is Memphis, Tennessee, zip code 38108, and that will be a community prayer breakfast that we are sponsoring um, for the community in that location as well as our event that's coming up on April the 12th, and that's going to be impacted with three empowered speakers uh, for you on that day, and that's also located at the Hollywood Community Center, um, 1560 North Hollywood Street and 38108. The time for the 12th is going to be at 12, and the event that starts on um, the 18th of May is going to start at 9 o'clock a.m., so come on out and be our guest for those two upcoming events. So on today, we have a interesting speaker with us, and his name is Michael McIntyre, and he's our guest for today on the show, Um, and we want to get some information about him so we can go forward in the broadcast. So good morning and welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you so much, Pastor. I appreciate it. Perfect. So tell us a little bit about you. Uh, Well, let me see. I uh, was uh, born and raised in Michigan and uh, went to the Air Force right out of high school. Uh, Parents couldn't afford to send me to college, so I joined the United States Air Force and served four years in the Strategic Air Command in Little Rock, Arkansas, with the Titan II uh, Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles. Went to college full-time while I was there. I was blessed to do that. Uh, And uh, then uh, after that, I moved to Dallas, Texas, where I fell in love with my wife, uh, (laughs) the woman that I married to for over 33 years, who's sitting here next to me, Stacy. And uh, I got in the insurance business, and was I just did really, really well. We uh, revolutionized the insurance industry, and uh, we made a tremendous amount of money. We took a company from zero to $3 billion, sold it in 2007, gave my life to Jesus in 2007. It was a big year, and uh, been on an evangelistic crusade, and uh, uh, fell in love with the Holy Spirit in 2012, and uh, been hanging out with the charismatic community, and having a great time and loving on Jesus. Perfect, perfect. That's an awesome background. It is so awesome. <laughs> I'm excited about the uh, upcoming information that you have to share uh, with the audience. And so um, just tell us, because a lot of times individuals, they um, are uh, seeking Christ, but they don't know how to find him. Sometimes we get confused about the fact that it's all about just getting up, going to church, and, you know, I lift up my hands, but sometimes people do not actually know how to actually connect and find him. So share with the listeners about how do you feel that it's the best way to um, discover him on this amazing walk? Yeah, it's a great question, Pastor. Stacey and I really, what, what we learn to do is to pray together. Number one, if you're married, we encourage your listeners to pray together. You know, there's a reason why you're in holy matrimony, because God put you there. And when, when you humble yourself and pray together out loud, uh, like Jesus said, he who humbles himself shall be exalt, exalted. And it, it, it really is an amazing intercessor sending it up to Jesus. And so uh, that's one way. The other way is to get in your secret place. I know a lot of times, uh, you, know, it, you know, Paul says to pray without ceasing, which is true. You should always be praying and praying in your spiritual language. But also, get in, get, you know, you don't have to be out in public to pray like the Pharisees, not saying that you are, but uh, <laughs> get, get, get in your secret space uh, and, or secret place and, and just Humble yourself, get on your knees, and just pray to God, and just ask for, just ask for clarity. You know, a lot of times, uh, you know, I know we discussed a little bit about the prophetic, and a lot of times uh, I was confused on how God speaks to us, and God will speak to you in your own language. You know, mm-hmm. if you, if you know, He's not going to speak to you in Mandarin if you don't know Mandarin, right? So uh, He's going to speak to you in a voice that you're, you're familiar with and that you hear. And when you hear those things, that's Him calling out and He wants to connect. And when you hear that. And a lot of times when you feel your heart beating, maybe in the situations where you think you should be praying for somebody for healing or for prophecy, and you feel that heartbeat, and that's the Holy Spirit really kind of nudging you and saying, come on, son, show them what you got. Glorify me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely, because... Um uh, to iterate on that, um, and this is not to be a biased uh, comment or anything, but sometimes, I, I guess, sometimes we go to church, um, you know, we have to um, 
let, let me see how to say this. We have to, you know, sometimes some leaders may not be that all connected, so that can be able to help the parishioners to be uh, come more connected. Uh, I just heard the Holy Spirit right there. So sometimes they're not that connected. So sometimes we have to go in a little deeper as as people. We have to be able to go in there and we have to uh, find him, uh, you know, for ourselves. That's very, very, uh, you know, um, important in ministry because uh, – I mean, no one can be able to get to heaven for us, so we're going to have to do some things for ourselves. And I think that may be some of the, the, um, the I guess, downfall, I guess I want to say, for some that they don't know how to connect. So that was, that was some very um, important um, tools that you shared uh, with us. So um, what's your message to new Christians that's making um, a new innovative uh, for Christ? I know the millenniums, different people have a different strategy, and I think sometimes um, we as leaders can become um, um, sidetracked, I guess I want to say, as to how to reach um, this new generational culture because people have different ways of praising God, different people have different ways of um, um, connecting. And so what would you um, say to people that are just coming in, just fresh off the off the platform, and they say, look, I want God, uh, you know, what would you like to share with them? What would be your message for new converts? Well, hello, Pastor. This is Stacy. Oh, and hi, I, Stacey. Hi. I just want to say that it's all about relationship. I, I okay. feel like if you call the Holy Spirit in, you call the Lord in to be with you during your Come day, on. every moment of every day, and, and let him just let him speak to you and let him be with you. And it's, it's like your best friend being with you, you get in the car in the morning and you're on your way to work and your best friend is with you. He, he's listening to you. He wants to be with you. He wants to know everything about you. Oh, really? So he does know everything about you. He really wants you to respect him. He wants you to be with your boy, he wants okay. you to hear every single thing that you have to say to him. Oh. So that's what I have to say about that. He wants to be your, your best friend. And I would say every morning you ask the Holy Spirit with you. Absolutely, absolutely. And so um, just to make a general introduction, we'd just like to welcome in Michael's wife, and her name is Stacy McIntyre, and she's um, going to also be a part of the podcast, and so we can get more information from both of them. Wow, that's awesome. So um, ex- ex- go ahead, go ahead, Michael. No, I was just going to just reiterate what Stacy was saying. And I think a lot of times, you know, we go to church and we get you know, what, what really helped me when, when I got into the charismatic community, what really helped me was the worship. And uh, we, we uh, uh, were at a room, and the worship lasted for an hour and ten minutes. And it really, really, it really uh, created a no, way Miranda. Jesus. So I'm telling you, I okay. have one coming in Dallas. Absolutely. So, um, and then I have another one coming up in Colorado. Explain to you, to explain to the listeners in your own terms about salvation. What does salvation mean to you? Well, it means everything. It's uh, it's it's, it's, it's a golden ticket. And then for a year, and I was like, yeah, you know, I, 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 once we once I we wish get I would have just gone the first no, time to say, will you send me the information again? Okay. And and, uh, the nice thing about the nice thing about the gift that God gives us that he's uh, he so loved the world and gave his only son is that he loved us very much to be at that salvation to say, you know, it's like a lot of people say, well, I, I'm not worthy to uh, receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior because I, I had an abortion or I, I did drugs or I had infidelity or mm-hmm. I had premarital sex, you know. That that is you know the the wonderful thing about the way Jesus got up on the cross and died for us. He bled for us. The Lamb that had no sin took on all the sin for us, and that gift is is immeasurable. You can It's just it's radical love. Nobody can really understand it. It just is. And so once you accept that gift, salvation is yours forever. And the nice thing is, Pastor, you don't have to work for it. There's no works involved. <laughs> Uh, and that's the blessings, and that's what really freaks out a lot of people, especially non-believers. 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely, I agree because sometimes, um, sometimes we can make. Um, you know, we can make salvation to be so difficult to be able to receive. We have to, we make, we put all of these, um, I guess, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, blocks or something like that in front of the, 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 the believer that's coming to Christ. But <clears throat> I'm, I'm even reminded of the late Billy Graham, and when he would preach in his crusades and what have you, he would just sit there and just tell them just to come to Jesus. He didn't he, he didn't make us a, a, a total specific. You didn't have to pay a car note. You didn't have to bring in your bills. You didn't have to do anything that was just huge. All you had to do was just come. And so I feel that the Holy Spirit moves off our intentions of our heart of what we have. And so I think that's just awesome. Um, and, you know, and, and hopefully that the listeners will take this at heart. Heart that um, of what you had stated about salvation, you know, I hope they, they can take it, this at heart because some people are being made to feel that they have to do, they have to put up a whole lot of things in order to yeah. um, get uh-huh. connected with God Himself. Yeah, that's, that's go ahead. Well, I, He just loves us so much, and He wants to be, like I said, in relationship with us. And we can, it, it takes one second just to give our life over to Him and let Him take over and let Him be at the wheel. And we, we really, you know, we have responsibility to Him once we come into relationship with him, that he will handle things for us. And all we have to do is go to him and ask him. Yeah, that's so good, Stacey. And the other thing, too, a lot of people feel that, you know, and I think, I think Satan puts this into a lot of people's minds because I think, you know, Satan, as we know, is, is the premier prosecutor, and he's, a, <laughs> uh, he's an expert in legal affairs. And so yep. uh, I, think, I think he brings in, this air of legalism into Christianity, which is uh, religion, which is not what we're talking about. Uh, mm-hmm. Salvation is not about religion. That's about the Pharisees. And, and so, mm-hmm. what, you know, the, the, what, what, I, what I want your listeners to know is that uh, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's a humbling moment and allows the Holy Spirit to be with you forever and here on earth in the natural and in the supernatural. But the, the main thing is, you don't give up anything. You gain everything. Yeah. You don't give up anything. And so many people out there feel that if you're becoming a born-again Christian, you can't, you, know, you can't do this, you can't have a glass of wine, you can't go uh, hang out with your buddies at the baseball game. That is ridiculous, ludicrous, and ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, Jesus said in John 10, 10, he said, uh, the enemy came to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus came to give us life abundantly. And life mm-hmm. means hanging out with your buddies, having a glass of wine, working, making money, uh, blessing other people, having a great relationship with your spouse, having a wonderful relationship with Jesus. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That is um, absolutely true. That is absolutely true. So, Stacey, um, what are some effective tools that Christians can utilize to stay on track with God? Because, okay, so for example, uh, I've experienced in the past, sometimes people, they'll get, you know, happy, you know, I found God, and they'll come to the altar, and they be crying, and they spill out all of their <laughs> emotional factors. But later on, you'll see them fall by the wayside a couple of Sundays later, and they, you won't see them, and you have to go back and find them and call them and, and invite them back to church. So what tools could you you be able to give to the listeners in order to stay on track with God? Well, I, I say that uh, his word is very important to stay in. You know, um, I, I think that that gives us so much hope and so much peace, and um, it's alive. His word is alive, and, and the Bible is alive. And so every time, like, I can go back to a different psalm or, or a different passage and every time it speaks something new to me. So it is, it is really um, alive, and the Holy Spirit just really, I, I, I feel like if we could stay in the Word, that that really helps a lot. I also feel that community is very, very important. Mm. I think that um, if, if you can get tied in with, uh, you know, if you're a brand-new Christian, you need someone that is, seasoned, someone that is mature, Mm -hmm. someone that knows how, you know, that has discernment and knows how this works to walk with. So I feel like if if somebody first came to Christ, I think they need to just cling to someone else that, that has a maturity about them. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So, Michael, uh, both of you all will be sharing this uh, question. So, Michael, you can go first on this one. So how has um, um, Christ impacted um, your life? So, for example, um, you know, when, when we were children, our father would always tell us, oh, it's fun living for Christ, but we had to experience that when we grew older because we came from another, um, he um, um, converted to another uh, ministry which was in holiness, and so we were and we were in another, um, you know, organization or, I guess, denomination, so we did not get the opportunity to learn, you know, spiritual things when we were younger. So, Therefore, we didn't know the full impact until we got older, you know, in age. And so, you know, we want uh, Christians to feel that they can have fun with God. So how has this impacted your life as a Christian? Well, it's been amazing. It's, you know, I, I, came to, I came and gave my life to Jesus 11 years ago, Diane, and so I was kind of later in life. I ran from Jesus for 48 years. And so, uh, you know, I, I had my big road to Damascus and, uh, I'm grateful ever since, and it changed my life forever. It really did. It, it was a, uh, it was a profound change. And one of the things that it did is it opened up my eyes and it opened up my heart to true friendship in, and fellowship in Christianity. I had no idea. Being a business guy and doing business deals for so many years and being successful at that, I always looked at things through a business lens, and which, as sometimes I confess, was kind of jaded. And so when I became a Christian. Uh, it was nice, and it was comforting, and it was so rewarding to be around other Christians who were truly Christians that weren't in the judgmental judgment or didn't have an agenda, and it was really it was really amazing. And that that experience really changed my life, and continues to do so. And and being in a community that that is full of real believers and true believers uh, that don't judge you for mistakes that you've made, that don't you know I, that aren't hypocritical. Uh, that walk the walk and talk the talk. It's really, uh, it's really a wonderful change in business, in the community, and in the, our ministry. So it, it's been profound for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, Stacy. Yes, and uh, for me, I, I came to know Christ when I was 12 years old. So I, I was young and didn't know much. And as I look back, he walked with me every step of the way. There were times I fell away. I wasn't with him all the time. And um, I would come back, and, and <laughs> I'm telling you, any time I asked, he was right there with me. And he, he stepped with me through many things in my childhood, in my young life, uh, I look back, and I probably wouldn't be alive if it weren't for him. And so uh, he is he is my best friend. And I, I'll tell you also um, what Michael was saying is you ha- you come to know real relationships, true mm-hmm. friendships, um, the, of people that share. You might have a different background. You might come from a whole different culture. You might be a totally different person. But once you step in and you're believers together, you can come together and you can be friends and you can share life and it doesn't matter. Just because you share Jesus and share the salvation together, you can be friends. So I think that is a rich, rich life. Amen. Absolutely, absolutely. Because I think we we, we, we live out our patterns in in this, uh, you know, in this Christian walk, like I said, we didn't, uh, uh, you know, I, I think about so many times, uh, I think I actually found him. I've, I've been going to church all of my life, but I actually found him mm-hmm. at the age of 32. And so yeah. you, you said back sometimes that you reminisced on that, of how effective um, that it could have been before then. But, you know, we can't, yeah. um, I guess, wail on spilled milk. Uh, we no, just have to pick, yeah, we just it. have to pick up where we are and just, you know, try to move forward. Come on, yeah. that's right. That's, that's right. right. I, 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 I've had those grieving moments before as well, and you, yeah, you got to just give that to Christ and move on. Yeah, He doesn't want that. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so uh, the more that, 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 you know, we're on this Christian journey, we learn, uh, you know, continuously. And so um, I, I try to tell people that he's not concerned, and, and I think this is where people, and you can elaborate on this too, both of you, I think we get concerned about 
what, what, what we were in, in the beginning. And so, and what I tried to teach people today is God is not concerned about what you did yesterday. Uh, you know, his mercies are renewed every day. You, you figure yeah. out what you want to do today. Today, what is, which is, today is today what's important to him, what he's concerned about, what you're doing right now. Today, I mean, yesterday has already passed. So sometimes I think we dwell on some things. Um, and yeah. I think uh, uh, the, what Michael was saying, the, the enemy is the prosecutor. <laughs> Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, yesterday has been litigated. So, you know, we, we don't need to retry that. And, and, <laughs> and, and the enemy likes to come in there and try to retry that all the time. And, and you know, we all, we all, you know, we live in a fallen world, Pastor, so we all need to, you know, constantly, you know, some people can, uh, you know, uh, forgive and, and be one and done. You know, I'm not that guy. I have to forgive a lot. So I forgive myself, number one, and then forgive myself mm. for past and, and give it to Jesus and just repent, you know. Uh, but once you forgive and you repent, Jesus gives us, gives us absolution on that. And so you get freedom. Uh, you, know, the, the, you know, the Bible says that, that he doesn't remember our inequities as, as, as far as from the east is from the west. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's a good father. And all you have to do is trust in him and you'll be okay. Yes, and, uh, you know, what, the thing that always comes to me, I mean, every day, is he never leaves me and he never forsakes me. Mm-hmm. And so maybe, maybe yesterday I, was, I had anxiety. Well, today I pick myself up and I ask Jesus to take that away. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and, and the, the longer we walk with him and the closer and the deeper relationship that we have with him, the easier it is to go to him and just ask him to take it. Just take it, Jesus. And the blood of Jesus covers everything. Amen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I absolutely agree. Okay, so now um, expound on a little bit, uh, and both of you all can be able to do this um, um, if you can. Um, tell us a little bit about your next level training. Um, speak to the, the, the listeners. See, because when we have guests on the podcast, we are more concerned about the listeners getting all of this um I guess uh, depositing down, you know, this downloading. We want them to download these these things of what the guests are sharing uh, with them. And then also we are interested in the uh, listeners being able to connect because it's just not about uh, our ministry, our podcast, uh, the professional pastor. It's not about us. It's about the listeners connecting with other individuals that are have been branded in ministry, branded in the Christian um, um, um atmosphere or environment, and so they can be able to uh, connect with them, follow them, um, and also be able to get on the boat with them if they have to <laughs> or if they choose to. So it's just yeah. not about us. It's about um, being able to share resources with them where they can be able to um, go out and get information from other individuals and connect with them. So tell us about the next level for your training that you do provide. Thank you, Pastor. It, it's, uh, I, I love the I love the way you really really bless the listeners, and I think it's really it's really amazing your podcast. And congratulations for that. Uh, what 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 we did here, Stacy and I, uh, about four years ago. Cause all our lives, we've been you know working on ourselves and, and doing different projects and different things and reading a lot and doing some trainings together. And so about four years ago, uh, I, got, I had the uh, pleasure of uh, working with a, a, a new church that we were helping get going and uh, be, having a background that I've had with the insurance business and, and doing trainings and, and motivational speaking and whatnot. Uh, they asked us to put on a, uh, a retreat for the staff. And so we went out to West Texas, and we had about 30 people out there. And we did this, we did this training from the Holy Spirit during the training, the Holy Spirit downloaded me and said, listen, we need to change this up a little bit. We did. And then after we did, it was really profound and it was really emotional. It was impactful. And the pastor came up to me and said, Michael, that was revolutionary. You need to take this thing out and, and really bring it to other Christians. So that's what we've done. We, we started this thing called the Next Level Experience, uh, Next Level Training. And it, it's a three-day intensive uh, vacation uh, and that really opens up your heart. It opens up your uh, it, it opens up your eyes to new new possibilities in Christ. And so, a lot of times when we when you know when ever since we're born, we're born into this fallen world. Pastor, we kind of we get away from what God intended us to be and what He made us. He's the manufacturer. He wrote the specs on us. So 
sometimes we forget. We forget because we have circumstances. We have financial issues. We have relational issues. We have health issues. And all these things come at us daily. And we forget who God made us to be and who he wanted us to be. And so what we do in this next level experience is we allow the Holy Spirit to run the operation. Uh, We do have a curriculum, and it's been really good. And sometimes we follow it, and sometimes the Holy Spirit hijacks it. And so it's three days of intensive uh, training. It's where you you have a paradigm shift. You you get to look at the world uh, in a different set of glasses. And uh, the best thing, though, about this is unlike a vacation, when you go on a vacation, it's great. You come back, you're all happy, tan, and and feeling good about yourself. But then after about 10 days, circumstances hit you, and you forget about how happy and open-hearted you were. But what this does with our next level experience, it allows people to have that openness, and it, and it transforms their lives, and it stays with them forever. And it's not nearly as expensive as a vacation. So uh, okay. Faith and I are really blessed to do it. We have our daughters help us with it, and we have other people in our community that come in. And it's amazing. We've trained a lot of worship leaders, pastors, business leaders, and uh, it's, it's quite remarkable. It's intense. It's fun. It's Holy Spirit. It's paradigm shifting. It will change your life and to where a lot of people, they may wanna, might want to get a raise or they might want to start a new business or go back to college or they want to be a better husband, a better wife, or find that godly man or godly woman. This puts them on the trajectory to do that. So uh, we're blessed to be able to do it, and, and we feel that uh, God's given us the anointing on this. Mm-hmm. Yes, perfect. and also, Di- Diane, one thing I have to say is, what, what I've seen out of people that have done the training, people that had, you know, always in their heart they wanted to write a book or they wanted to, um, you know, have a child or they wanted to get married or they wanted, I mean, any, any number of things uh, that God really puts it in their heart to, to have this happen because he shows them who they were made to be. Yeah. And so that's really, we've seen people write their books. We've seen people have their babies. We've seen people get married. We've seen start, start a business. business. I mean, we've seen all kinds of things. And so okay. it, when, when you know who God made you to be, the excellence in you comes out and the rigor and, and all of the things that, that he wants in you and for you, because he wants us to have, he puts those dreams in us for a reason, and he wants them. And sometimes I notice that people in the secular world, it's so easy for them to maybe their dreams to come true, and I think some Christians hold back because they're afraid that, oh, maybe I have to wait for an answer, and God doesn't <laughs> want this for me. And mm-hmm. he, 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 No, God wants that for you. He put that mm-hmm. dream in you. And so um, we really let, uh, we, God shows us how to allow people to be who they were meant to be. Amen. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's amazing what we get to do in three days. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. So we got just a few minutes, a couple of minutes left uh, for uh, on air. So uh, with the last couple of minutes, um, share with the listeners of how they can be able to connect with you, any um, uh, releases that you have on any e-books, any publications, any social media platforms that you're willing to share for them to be able to follow you, or any website links that you would um, like for them to be able to um, search out some information about you to get more acquainted with your brands and products. You you can do that at this time. Well, thank you so much, Pastor. Yeah, they can check us out at uh, NLE, uh, which is Next Level Experience Dallas.com, NLE Dallas.com. And they can also go to uh, my website, which is Michael P. McIntyre.com. That's Michael P. McIntyre.com. And I'm all over the social media. And we've got, uh, I've got a book out, too, that was uh, published in 2011 called The Authentic Salesman. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, What's yeah. your Instagram handle? Oh, the Instagram is, is uh, <laughs> at, the, uh, what is it, the Michael Mac- the real Michael McIntyre? I don't know. <laughs> it's on, but it's on there. And then uh, if you go to the NLEDallas.com, you'll see all my links, and you can, you can connect there. But, yeah, uh, we've got Facebook, which is Michael McIntyre on my Facebook, and there's a guy that impersonates me out in Scotland, so that's <laughs> the same okay. guy. Uh, but yeah, get, just go check it out. Then, the next training. And we and our training, yeah, the next level experience training is in Dallas, Texas, at the Love at the Double Tree Love Field uh, Hotel, and it's on May third, fourth, and fifth, and uh, it's all on that uh, nledallas.com. So check it out. Okay. Wow. 
Wow, that is so powerful. Look, listeners, you have really got the total package today for salvation, how to walk with God. They shared so many of their experiences of what have been able to keep keep them and maintain their uh, strategic walk with Christ. You have gotten everything that you just about needed, and so you can take this information today and be able to walk away being a winner. You can be an overcomer, and you can also be impacted from uh, what they have shared with us on uh, today. So for all upcoming events and to be able to find out the next guest that's going to be on the show, which is going to be Tuesday, you can go to our website at www.stpetersburgglobalministries.org. So thank you, Michael and Stacy, for being our guest on the show today. Thank, thank you, you, Pastor. Thank you. Blessings to you and your listeners. Okay.